For Crumbly, the parents of the Oxford High School shooter will be sentenced in an Oakland County court. Today, we're learning new details on what they're asking for. Charlie Langton joins us now with the latest. Hi, Charlie. Well, hello there. I wish we had better weather. That's the first thing here. So if Rich Luderman could do a song, uh, that would be good to help us with this weather. Anyway, um, I'm in front of the Oakland County Courthouse, where, as you said, Jamie, next Tuesday, Judge Cheryl Matthews will have the discretion on sentencing both James and Jennifer Cromley. Of course, we know they were both convicted of involuntary manslaughter. So just a little review of what a sentencing in a criminal case is all about. There's always two numbers. The statute is sets the high number, which in this case is 15 years, and then the judge sets the lower number. That lower number is the number that they must serve in prison before they would be eligible for parole. I try to make it as simple as I can, but Michigan has a kind of a unusual sentencing uh, and then different than the whole country. We don't have good time, they just do the minimum. All right, let's see what they want. First of all, Let's start with the easy one, the prosecutor. The prosecutor wants 10 to 15 years. Remember, the statute sets the top number, which in this case is 15 years. Everyone, that's going to be the mandate. That'll be the maximum. But under the law, under guidelines, you can only ask for two-thirds of the maximum, which in this case would be 10 years. Prosecutor wants that. There are sentencing guidelines that are for any manslaughter case with these facts, and they're roughly three and a half to seven years. Again, that's the first number. That's the number that the judge will set, and whatever that number is, three and a half to seven years, that's the guidelines. But the judge has discretion to go above the guidelines, and in this case, the prosecutor wants 10 years. I know it's confusing, but that's just the way it is here in Michigan. Now, what does James Crumley want? James Crumley, in a sentencing memo, said that he would like to get out of jail today, the day of Tuesday, and he would just wants to get sentenced to time served. He's already been there about two and a half years, give or take, and he says that's enough time. Remember, guidelines, the, the first number, we already know that the guidelines set by the statute is about three and a half to seven years, and two and a half years would be below the guidelines. And I highly doubt this judge is gonna go below the guidelines. But anyway, that's what James wants. Now, what does Jennifer Crumley want? This gets interesting. Jennifer Crumley wants to be sentenced to a tether and stay at the house of her attorney, the guest house of her attorney. I don't know where that fits in the sentencing guidelines. I don't know how long she would be at the guest house, but nevertheless, that's what she wants. I don't think the judge is going to do that, but you never know. So a couple of interesting things that happened at the sentencing memo. First of all, on James, the prosecutor really went heavy on James. And the prosecutor on Tuesday will pre present likely audio, perhaps video if they have it, of James Crumley in the jail basically threatening the elected prosecutor, Karen McDonald. And these are some of the words that you will hear at sentencing. And if you want to read them on the memo, you can do that. I can't say them on television, though. A lot of F words and threats and she better watch out. And I'm paraphrasing, but they're all in there. That goes to the lack of remorse, according to the prosecutor. And then that would justify the judge for going above the sentencing guidelines to, for that 10 years. That's James. Jennifer, the same thing. In fact, the prosecutor wrote in the sentencing memo that Jennifer Crumley has a chilling, I think that was the word, chilling a lack of remorse. I think those are the words that they actually use. And basically that she showed a lot of disrespect both when she testified and when she wrote out a pre-sentence report basically saying that she under misunderstood the question about whether or not she would have changed anything. She said, of course I would have changed something. It's obvious, etc." get ready for some sentencing. Now, the other thing we have to talk about in sentencing real quick is the victim's impact. And although a couple of attorneys that I talked to said that the judge probably has already read everything, and because she presided over not one, but two trials in this case, she knows this case very well. And she knows the history of both Jennifer and James Crumley very, very well. So she may even have her mind already set up. So will the victims really make an impact on her? doubtful. However, under the law, victims in this case do have a right, a constitutional right, to speak 
at sentencing, and they certainly will do this. I would expect that we're going to be here for the entire day. It's a lengthy process, but a very important process to make sure that due process takes its course. Again, judge has a lot of discretion in sentencing, but those are the numbers, those are the variations, those are all the possibilities. Jamie? Yeah, Charlie, you mentioned one of Jennifer Crumbly's asks was to be on house arrest and to stay with her attorney. Uh, that sounds unusual. Do people usually request something like that? No, no, I mean, no. First of all, I don't know how many attorneys have guest houses, first of all, that's the first thing. I don't have a guest house, I wish I did. But I certainly wouldn't want a criminal, convicted criminal staying there. But nevertheless, it is amazingly unusual I don't really understand it. Some of the lawyers that I talked to today don't really understand that. You're going to see a little bit of that at 5 o'clock today when I pose that to the question of, a, of seasoned criminal lawyers. What do you think about the guest house defense? And they all, well, you'll see. You'll see at 5 o'clock. Uh, but anyway, no, it's, it's kind of bizarre. I don't think, and, and actually, you got to be careful. I make it a little fun of it. I shouldn't because it's a very serious, I mean, it's part of the due process, but you gotta be careful on credibility when you say something like that. Now, house arrest is very common, but not at your attorney's house. So, uh, so you can be sentenced to house arrest, but what would that mean is that she would be essentially be getting out of, of jail at this point in time. She's already done about two and a half years, just like James, her husband. Um, and so that would be under the guidelines. Remember, the guidelines started about three and a half years and go to seven years for that first number. So for the judge to give the Crumleys a sentence below the guidelines, I just don't think that's realistic. And I think that you have to be you have to be wise. They should ask probably for a sentence on the low side of the guidelines. Um, that would be a little more uh, palatable. After all, they were convicted of involuntary manslaughter for the gross negligence of the murder of, um, well, he was of the murder, yes, of the murder of four kids. They weren't convicted of murder, they weren't even charged with murder, but manslaughter is a form of murder. It's a death and four students terribly died. Plus, what they did changed the entire community. So I think it's not realistic that this judge, in this case, would go below the guidelines. And house arrest? Unless there's some absolute medical necessity or something, but I didn't see that anywhere. I don't think that's realistic. Jamie? Yeah, and Charlie, when you think about the historical implications of this trial, them being the first parents to be charged in a school shooting, some may say they're not exactly in a position to request anything special here. Yeah, charged and convicted too. That's a great point you made. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. Uh, but but nevertheless, even though they're the first, um, you got to look at the facts of this case. And there were certain things that they neglected, and that's what the jury found. Listen, some people say they should never have even been charged, and that it sets a precedent precedent that if you're a parent and you got a bad kid, look out because you could be charged. But I, I do think that this is um, specific to these facts. I mean, these are terrible facts of this case, and there were warning signs um, that the shooter exhibited to the parent. Uh, and the parents apparently ignored them. That's what the jury said. So whether you believe in that, whether or not Karen McDonald, the prosecutor, should have even charged them, that's one thing. They were charged, and now they were convicted. So we've got to talk about sentencing. But I do think there's going to be, um, you know, this did impact the community, and it impacted a lot. And yes, because that this is the first um, uh, parents to be sentenced, I think the judge is now going to have a say, how serious do we take lackadaisical, grossly negligent parents convicted by a jury in not one, but two trials. What message are we going to set? And the judge can set that mess, send that message with a tough sentence. And I think, but well, nobody cares what I think, but I do think that we're going to get a sentence that probably will, that will go above the guidelines. I think the prosecutor is probably right on this one. Uh, but again, we'll see. Judge, again, has a lot of discretion with sentencing. Jamie? Yeah, when you look at what the prosecutor is asking for, which is the 10 to 15 year sentence, and you compare, to, compare that to what, you know, their son is facing, which is life in prison, you know, some may think they should get what their son got. Well, they can't. They, they can't. The law doesn't allow it. So they cannot get life in prison. It's not even about the max they can get. it. It's 10 to 15. You remember, let's, what, that, what does that mean, 10 to 15 years? Let's assume that's the sentence. That means the Crumleys will do 10 years in prison. And then on the 10th, well, on the 10th year in one day or so, they'll be eligible for parole and they'll go to a parole board. And if they were good prisoners, 
they did good things in the prison, then they'll be eligible for parole and they can get out. But if they were bad prisoners, they'll spend another year and then they'll have another parole hearing and another and another until 15 years has passed. And then on the 15th year, they, they have to let them out, even if they were the worst prisoners in the history of mankind. Unless they committed another crime, that's different. But And they were charged and sentenced accordingly. But the bottom line here is they can't do more than 15. They cannot do, they can't do more than 15 for this particular crime. It's 10 years in Michigan. We don't have good time. We just don't have it. It's not part of the Michigan sentencing. The federal system is different. They do. Michigan does not. So if it's 10 to 15 years, the Crumbies will do 10 years in prison. They'll get credit for the two and a half years or so that they've already spent in jail. Uh, uh, and that's, that's what they'll get credit for. But they will still do a total of 10 years and then be eligible for parole. I don't know if they're going to get out. We'll be back here eight years or so and we'll do this again. Uh, Jamie to see if they were good prisoners because there'll be a parole hearing and the prosecutor right. probably will object. We'll see. Yeah. Good to know. Thanks for explaining that 10 to 15 year uh, sentence versus life in prison. I saw a lot of questions on that. So thanks for that, Charlie. We'll see what happens next week. You got it. Right. You got it. All right.